Good morning, good morning. A blessed, beautiful day that the Lord has made. We're excited to be here one more time. We thank God for the victory, and that's where we are today. We are studying about total victory in Christ, the whole armor, spiritual warfare, how to walk in victory. God bless you for tuning in today. Let us pray, God, for this day we say thank you. We thank you for who you are. You're awesome. You're marvelous. You're all-powerful. We thank you that you're wonderful. God, we love you. We thank you for forgiveness for our sins. We thank you, oh God, for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for clothing us in our right mind and another chance to come together and walk in the word. Now, God, blood tip every ear to hear and every heart to receive that this may not be of us, but all about you and us receiving your word. And when we're through, we'll be better and more victorious Christians in this walk. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today we want to go back to uh, the whole armor, part two. Ephesians chapter six, and we picked up at verse number 10. But we want to pick up where we left off last time. Paul would write to us and he would say, finally, my brethren, finally, all of my saved family, my Christian family. He says, be strong in the Lord. You cannot, listen to me, you cannot have total victory without being strong in the Lord. Your strength doesn't come from you. It comes from the Lord. One of your favorite scriptures, our favorite scripture, Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things, listen, through Christ which strengtheneth me. The psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Your strength comes from and you can be strong you can but in him be strong in the Lord he says and in the power of his might not in your own might but in his might in his strength be strong in the Lord he says after all that I've told you one of the last things or the last things I want to tell you is please please be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If the apostle Paul were here today, he would plead with us. Oh, yes, he would beseech us. Please, today, be strong in the Lord. You can have victory if you're strong in him and in his power, in his might. Another way you can have victory, you got to be properly dressed. We told you last time, put on, not God put it on you. You put it on. Put on the whole armor of God. I'm just recapping, trying to bring you up to speed. He says, we have to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the traps, the designs of the evil one, the devil. He's busy. Yes, he is. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't take a vacation. He's busy. And so in order for us to be victorious over him, we must put on the whole on for our protection. Most of the parts are for our protection. There are two parts are for our defense. Uh, the other parts are for our offense. So let me help you real quick. Uh, he says, uh, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Listen, our fight is not with humans. Please get that. Our fight is never with people. Our fight, our warfare is spiritual. The, listen, you are engaged in spiritual combat. And a lot of times the devil walks right in gets the victory when he doesn't even have to get the victory. We allow him to get the victory because we are not properly dressed or we don't use the weapons that we have. I've said it down through the years and I'll keep on saying it. 
You cannot, I want you to get this, you cannot fight what you cannot see with what you can see. One more time. You cannot fight what you can't see with what you can see. You don't fight spiritual warfare with carnal weapons, fleshly weapons, man-made weapons. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I think, it, yeah, it's the fourth verse. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are not fleshly, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let me sit there for a minute. The enemy has come in and established strongholds in our homes, in our lives, in our world, in our country, and sometimes in our mind. Yeah, strongholds of fear, strongholds of doubt, strongholds of unforgiveness. How do we get rid of strongholds, strongholds that have been established in our homes where there is no peace, nothing but confusion, generational curses, Lord Jesus, we have to learn through spiritual warfare how to pull down those strongholds. And he says, casting down every imagination, anything, I'm paraphrasing, that, that, that puts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing it into obedience. Listen, the enemy, if you don't allow him, cannot have power over you. You have power over him. I wish I had some help. You have power over the enemy. One more time. You have power, not on yourself, but through God over the enemy. You can pull down those strongholds. You can destroy those generational curses. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can walk in victory. You don't have to wait till the victory. You get victory. You have victory victory, casting down everything, pulling it down, pulling it down the strongholds that have been established in areas of our lives. But you can't, you can't do it with physical abilities. You can't do it with your intellectual abilities. Your money can't do it. Your cars, your houses can't do it. Your status in life cannot do it. At the end of the day, listen, at the end of the day, once you get through riding in the car and in impressing everybody with your income and your abilities and your this, that, and the other, you still have to deal with what goes on on the inside. A lot of us look like we are at peace, but we're really not. We're warring, as Paul says, there's a war going on in my members, in my flesh. He says, when I would do good, Help me teach. Evil is all around me, ever present with me, so that the things that I would not do, I find myself doing. And the things that I would do, I find myself not doing. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me, Lord, help me teach, from this vile body of flesh. Then he goes on, he said, thanks be to God. God gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. You do not, you better hear what I'm saying, have to live a defeated life. I one more time. You do. You choose to. You don't have to live a defeated life. Now, when I say live, you live a victorious life and don't have to live a defeated life, doesn't mean that trouble won't come. Doesn't mean. Does not mean that your heart won't bleed. Doesn't mean that life wouldn't seem unfair. But it does mean you go through it. You don't get stuck in it. Oh, help me, T. David said in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk, verse number four, through the valley, you missed it. He didn't say I'm stuck in the valley. I go through, and that gives me to know that there is progress even in your darkness, even in your low places, even through death you can still, or the death of a loved one, you can still progress. He says, I'm going through the valley, not getting stuck in the valley. And that's why we make a lot of mistakes. A lot of our mistakes, we get stuck in it. No, you're going through it. I say often, and I teach like this, uh, a stop sign doesn't mean stay. Wow. 
You ever come, have you ever come to a four-way stop sign? Or even a, a one-way stop sign? A and the person in front of you is just sitting there, and they sit there for an excessive amount of time. I, let me be transparent. There are times when I used to, thank God I've grown, I would yell from my car as if they could hear me in their car and say, stop doesn't mean stay. Go. Oh, you got to catch this. In your life, you will come to some stop signs. Stop signs will, are only there to allow you to not be destroyed. Oh, because if you run through a stop sign or destroy others or things, when you run through a stop sign, you're going to have uh, potentially an accident. But stop doesn't mean stay. It means pause a while. And in life, situations come that we are not supposed to stay there. We just stop for a minute, and then we look around, take inventory, help me teach, and we go through. Go through the stop sign after you have stopped. Life's stop signs will cause us to pause, to take inventory of our lives, of ourselves, of our situations. So if you've come to a stop sign in life, it doesn't mean stay. Did you guess that? So Paul says, listen, we are in spiritual warfare. We are fighting, but you cannot fight what you cannot see with what you can see. Oh, help me teach. So he says, put on the whole armor. Put it on. You put it on. You put it on. God's not going to do it for you. You've got to put it on. So let me hurry. I'm trying to get to, to the second part of this. Watch this. And he says that after you've done all to stand in the evil day, this is the day that we're living in. We're living in an evil day. We're living in a time where there's corruption way above us. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? We're living in a time where lives are being lost unnecessarily. Are you hearing me? Not, not, we're living in a time when, when people are playing with our lives. Your Lord help me teach. People are really encouraging us. Let me go COVID-19 real quick and I'll get to what affects us beyond that. They're telling us, open up everything. Go back into life like nothing ever happened. Baby, that's somebody playing with your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's a, it's a spirit out there. You've got to be careful because folk are more in love with money than they are with your life. I wish you catch that. Please don't be fooled. Don't you be fooled by your stimulus checks, your income People don't care about you. That check came out to stimulate the economy. That's why it's called a stimulus check, to stimulate the economy. Whether you live or die is of no importance to a lot of people. To some, thank God, who are concerned, thank God for you. But you, you know where I'm at. Come on. He says, it's a spiritual thing. Now, let's go back. When you are faced with dilemmas, it's easy for you to fall into deep depression. It's easy for you to fall into an I don't give a care attitude. Listen, that's a stronghold. That's spiritual warfare. And you've got to know how to pull up from it and have victory in and through it. Are you hearing me? And so he says, in the last, in, in these evil days, having done all the stand, stand Having your loins, we talked about it last week, gird about with truth. The devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. He's the author of lies. Listen, and so in order to yeah, overcome his lies, you've got to be girded up with truth. Truth must in, in, envelop you. Truth must uh, surround you, be attached to you. God's word is truth. The enemy comes with lies and tells you you're alone. But the word of God says, I will never leave you. I think God said that. Nor forsake you. He says, I'm with you always, even, come on, child of God, until the end of the world. The enemy comes with lies and tells you that you cannot make it. But the word of God, which is truth, says, I can do all things. Here we go again. Through Christ, 
Yeah, who strengthens me. The enemy comes and tells you you cannot be happy. You cannot enjoy life like God wants you. Catch that part. Like God wants you to enjoy. But the word of God says, Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Paul says in Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord. Look what he says. Always and again I say rejoice. Yeah, Philippians 4 and 4. So then the word of God is true. The devil is a lie, a liar. Do you hear me? So he says, gird yourself, wrap the truth around you. And you can't know truth if you don't know the word. Please hear me today. You've got to, now nah, let me park there. I, I, I need to be fair. Listen, a lot of people I've heard down through the years in life and in my pastorate, people will say, you know what? I don't know the word like everybody else. Well, I know you're going to get mad right here, but I'll, I'll help you. That's your fault. Yeah. Because you don't know the Bible like, like you think other people know it, that is your fault. Please don't turn me off. I'm trying to help you. That is your fault. Why? Because you, you learn readily what you deal with frequently. Mm -hmm. You learn readily what you deal with frequently. If you frequent the Bible, if you study the word, you can learn the scriptures. Yeah. Now, here's what I said. Now, be fair. Now, most of us, or most of you rather, can't say uh, 1 John 4 and 4 says, or, or St. John 12 and 2 says, I want to give you some encouragement there. Don't let anybody put down on you because you can't say exactly where the scripture comes from. I want to help you with a great example that I discovered years ago. Jesus was in the wilderness. Are you following me? And he was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days. You remember right after his baptism, the Bible says he was, the spirit of God led him there to be tempted of the of the devil. We find three instances of his temptation. Now, each time the devil came to him, Jesus responded, and you've got to catch this. He said, it is written. He quoted from Exodus and from Deuteronomy three times. He quoted from either one of those. His response was, it is written, but watch me. He never said where it was written. Are you hearing me? He, this is helping somebody. He never said chapter and verse. And, and I could deal with that later. Don't get uh, deep on me. But, but he never said this is in this book of the law. He just said the word says. Oh, but he quoted it accurately. I won't help you today. Everybody doesn't have the, the, the power of retention like other people. But you can say what the word says. Am I helping you? You can say the word of God says. And then you can quote it accurately. Because you've internalized it. David said. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I hid the word in my heart. God you didn't put it there. I took the word. I hid it. Come on help me. You got to hide it in your heart. You, you've got to hide it in your heart. And so. In order to, to deal with truth and be walking in truth, with truth, you've got to know truth. In order to know truth, you've got to know the word of God. Let me run on. And, I mean, Ephesians chapter 6. Listen, he says, your loins gird about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. That means uh, the breastplate, I told you, covered about from here and almost to the knees. Listen, that, that protected the internal parts. Uh, you're doing right. You walking in the righteousness of God protects you. Did you catch that? Stop, stop allowing the world to dictate to you what's right and wrong. Stop letting the popular crowd, I'm in trouble here, dictate to you how you ought to live and what level you ought to be on and how you ought to be great and how you ought to be living your best life. Those folk don't even care about God, nor do they care about you. Because when they get ready, they will X you out of their group. Are you hearing me? Make sure that if nobody else is pleased with how you're living, God is pleased. The breastplate, the covering of righteousness. 
at the end of the day, make sure you've done the right thing. Make sure you've treated people right. Make sure you've had the right attitude. Ultimately, and uh, more than anything, make sure you've pleased God. The breastplate, it covers you. It protects you, your vital organs. And so we talked about it last week, 15, Ephesians 6. Your feet shot, covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You need to walk in peace, but you can walk in peace through the good news. We as believers have a peace to know that no matter what happens to us, we are victorious. Why? Because Jesus, watch me close, Jesus took care of all of our sins, all of our defeats, all of our dilemmas at the cross. Mm -hmm. That's the gospel. He lived, he died, he was buried, and on the third day, he rose from, don't let nobody fool you, he lives, he's alive. Am I right? And so the gospel, that's it. The good news is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen, that whosoever, aren't you glad he said whosoever? Believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Oh, I'm glad about that. Once you put your total confidence and trust in him, ask him and you ask him to come into your life and you give him preeminence in your life you will never perish but you will have eternal life everlasting are you hearing me and eternal life a better quality of life so then the devil is a liar you can walk in peace the gospel which brings peace the good news should settle all doubts Again, you already have the victory, child of God. It was secured over 2,020 years ago. You have the victory through Christ Jesus. All right, let's get on. Verse number 16 is where we pick up. Ephesians 6. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith. We talked about it a little bit last week. The shield of faith. He said, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, of the devil. He shoots at you. He aims at you. He uses situations and circumstances to get at you. He uses people and what they say and what they think and how they act, even on the job, in the home, sometime in the place of fellowship, some Lord help me, sometime in, in, in community, in, in your, your, your subdivision. He uses your neighbors, but they don't have to dictate to you how you respond. You put that shield on your arm, faith, and you hold it up. When those fiery arrows come at you, you can put them out. They can be extinguished. Why? Because you walk, help me, Paul, by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians 5 and 7. You walk by faith and not by sight. Stop walking by what you see. Listen, my brother and I, Pastor Mark Nelson Sr., we fish often, but there have been times when we walked outside early in the morning and it looked like it was going to rain. So we canceled our fishing trip, which is what we love to do together. We canceled our fishing trip. Guess what? The next hour or two, the sun is shining bright. Why? Because we walked by what we saw, not by what we knew. So from now on, what we've done, we, we go anyway. We go anyway. We keep going. Sometimes if you watch, and, and he and I, we'll ch ch call each other the night before. What did the weather uh, person say? What did the meteor meteorologist say? What did the news say? And they will give us a quote-unquote, don't go fishing. That's what they'll give us, according to the weather. But then we get up the next day and we go anyway and we say to each other, if we had listened to them, look at what we would have missed out on. Oh, I'm teaching better than y'all saying something. If you keep listening to what you see and to what people say, you look at what you can miss out on. So many blessings. This is a spiritual thing. You've got to get in tune with God and walk it by faith and not by what you see. What you see 
It always was real. Mm. Did you catch that? What you see is not always what's real. Satan will manipulate things to look a certain way. And it's not even close to that. Mm. He's, listen, he does his job well. But you got to put on the shield. Of, he said, now, now, most believers have to question, do they have faith? Why? Because your faith is in proportion of the word that you hear, or to the word you hear. Mm -hmm. So then, Romans 10, 17, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, the more word I hear, the more faith I have. That's why I want to come here real quick, and I don't care who don't like it. That's why it is important for you to sit under and in the presence of a God-filled, God-anointed preacher slash teacher. So, because faith come by what? Hearing, not reading. Hearing. You got to keep hearing the word. Lord, help me. You got to keep hearing the word. And I said that not to slight preachers or pastors. I said that because a lot of people say, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to be under a pastor. I don't believe in this, that, and that. Listen, faith come by hearing. The, God gives us people to speak the word. I know you can study your Bible on your own. But then he gives us teachers. Are you hearing me? Who can? Here. Everybody, you say, interpret the Bible difference, different. That's the problem. The Bible, the scripture says, it is not of any private interpretation. Only the spirit of God through the people of God who teach the word will allow them to give you the unadulterated, uncompromised word of God. Every sheep needs a shepherd. Do you hear me? Every sheep needs a shepherd. I want you to catch that. And so faith, when you, when you get faith, is from the hearing of the word of God. Yeah. And so he says that you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. Listen. Cover your head with the fact and knowledge, number one, that you are saved. Know that you're saved. A lot of people I've discovered have a problem knowing that they're saved, number one, and number two, believing that they are kept saved only by God. I want you to get that. Some people think they're saved. Folk have lied to them and said, you don't know where you're going when you die. Everybody go to church, ain't saved. You don't have nothing to do with that. You know that you know that you know that you are saved because you followed the prerequisite in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. For with the, uh, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Watch this. Doesn't mean I believe in God and I won't be baptized. No, no. You actually put forth your total self, your life in the hands of Christ, and then Christ comes into your life, which constitutes salvation. You confess that Jesus is Lord. Make an open confession. So then... You are saved, and once you're saved, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I'm going to get in trouble here, and I don't care. You do not lose your salvation. Once you're born into the family, you are in the family, the helmet of salvation. Child of God, you're saved. You are saved. If you're really saved, you're saved. So the example that I use is I was born to the parentage of Marcel Sr. and Janetta Alexis Nelson. Watch this. They are my parents. They gave me my name. I inherited my father's last name, Nelson. I was born a Nelson. Listen, I did not choose to be in this family. Did you hear me? And consequently, 
I can't get out of this family. Nothing I do can stop me from being my father's child. I could change my name. I'm still, my DNA says I'm a Nelson. I wish y'all hear me today. My DNA says I am a Nelson. I was born into the Nelson family. I want you to hear me. I could go out there and do any dastardly deed. It doesn't stop me. Matter of fact, when the headlines are read, it will say Oscar or Nelson. Did you catch what I just said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I am still my father's child. Once you're born, see, the way, the way you get into this family, this Christian family, is you're born into the family. You are God's child. Now, I must confess that God has some obedient children and he has some disobedient children. But in all actuality, we all who, who have been born again, his children. Everybody's not his child, only those who have been born again. What can stop you from being God's child? Name something. Look, but, but before you name it, let me check you and tell you, all sin is sin. There are no big sins and little sins. So if you go and say murder, then what about the liar? Mm -hmm. If you say uh, homosexuality, then what about the adulterer? Y'all ain't going to help me teach here. What sin that you can name that will cause you to lose your salvation? None. The only reason we go to hell is because of unbelief. But since you put your belief, uh, wait, 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 I hear you. You're saying, well, the only unpardonable sin, and let me help you real quick, is not suicide. It is not self-murder. That's false. Uh, the only unpardonable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Simply put, when the Holy Spirit comes and presents Jesus to you in a way you can understand and receive and you totally reject that forever, that's blasphemy and you cannot go to heaven. Did you, did you catch that? Now that's real teaching right there. Listen, so then, let me go back. When you're born again, you're born into the family, you can't be born again twice. Because if you could lose your salvation, can you be born again, again? No. I hope I hadn't confused you. You're born once into the family. I can't be born into the Nelson family twice. I was born once. I was born into God's family once. Is, and I'm, am I making sense now? Born into God's family once. I am God's child. So the helmet of salvation, number one, lets me know and reminds me that I am saved. Somebody say, I am saved. I'm talking about you who have asked Jesus. Remember a time of day when you asked Jesus to come into your life? Other than that, there's no salvation. You can't get there no other kind of way. You can't be good enough. You can't live good enough to be saved. You must exercise faith in Christ Jesus. All right. But because you're saved, you live right. Amen. Now, you can't go to church enough, but because you're saved, you go to church. Are you hearing me? For those, I don't have to go to church to be saved. No, you don't. You do not. You really don't. But because you're saved, you love God, and you want to be where God is. God is everywhere, I understand. But he did tell, tell us to come together in fellowship. Amen. He says, not forsaking the assembling of yourself. Hebrews chapter 10. Listen, not forsaking the assembling of yourself together. So you hearing what I'm saying? And so we should come together. And, and you ought to love God enough to want to be among God's people. You ought to love him enough to want to be. That's, that's the hurting part for us as believers. No, we are not basing our Christian uh, experience on this house and other houses like it. But we miss the fellowship. We miss being with God's people, encouraging each other and each other encouraging us. Listen, that's what we miss. We miss hearing uh, being under the shepherd, hearing the shepherd's voice, get, getting good instruction so we can go out and win others. That's what we miss. Amen. Let me get off of that. So then, uh, watch this. He says, the helmet of salvation, number one, knowing you're saved. Number two, knowing that your deliverance is coming. See, there are parts, and I might not get through this today. might be a part three, but it's okay. Listen, salvation is in parts. We're saying, I'm not saved. Yes, you are saved. You're saved. You can't go to hell. But then, number two, that's part one. Part two is, you're being saved. 
Every day, as you walk closer to God, you're being saved. Watch it. Uh -huh. From the power of sin. Ultimate salvation. Mm -hmm. You were saved when you accepted Christ from the penalty of sin. The wages, the payment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are y'all with me here? So the penalty for sin is death. We all were born sinners. We all should have died, which is eternal separation from the master. No, but since you accepted Christ, you have been saved from, catch it, the penalty of sin. Number two, you are being saved from the power of sin. Sin no longer has dominion over us, but we still grapple with our sin issues. And so each day, as we get more steeped in the word of God, fall more in love with God, walk more in the things of God, the power of sin is being extracted from us. Are you hearing me? We do have the victory over it, but let's be honest. Every now and then, if it's only a thought, we grapple with a sin problem. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And so I'm being saved from yeah, the power of sin. I have been saved from the penalty of sin. And number three, the ultimate, he says, the helmet of salvation. You've got to know that you will be saved from the presence of sin. Oh, child of God, it's sin all in this world. It's sin all around us. But guess what? We're going to a place where there is no sin. You will be saved. The word saved means delivered. I have been delivered from the penalty of sin. I'm being delivered from the power of sin. I shall be delivered from the very presence of sin. We've got to see sin. We've got to watch sin. We've got to... You know, sin is all around us. But when you get to that place called heaven, there is no sin. So he says, put that helmet of salvation on. Understand that trouble doesn't last always. Understand that God will deliver on time. The hope of your salvation. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he said, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Are you hearing me? And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. I want you to understand that salvation, the, thank you, Lord, the enemy attacks your mind. The battle takes place in the mind. Let's be honest. Don't print it. Don't, don't, don't post it. But let's be honest. We've got a problem a lot of times up here. When we want to think positive, here comes negativity. When we want to walk in faith, here comes doubt. When we want to walk in love, here comes something or somebody that tries to cause us to hate. The battle takes place. When we want to do right, wrong is... Y'all help me teach here now. The battle takes place in the mind. If the devil, the enemy, can cause you to think it, he'll cause your hands to do it. He'll cause your feet to go there. He'll cause your mouth to say it. He'll cause your heart to entertain it. Listen, the battle takes place in the mind. And so he says, protect your mind. Put on the helmet of salvation. Did you get that? The helmet of, know you're saved. Know you're being, oh yeah, I'm being delivered. Anybody out there can look back and say, I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm grateful that I'm not what I used to be. And folk, Lord help me, folk are still stuck where you were. Somebody say that. People are still stuck where you were. Let them stay there. It's okay. Because they can say, he used to, she used to, listen at the text, listen at the tense, used to, past tense. Used, they're only sharing your testimony. He was something. Praise the Lord. She was something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a shouting moment right there. Because they realized and they were actually saying they were, but I see a change. They don't want to admit it, but baby, they're saying it all the time. Brother, they are testifying for you. Let me get out of there. So then you're, you're being saved from the 
power of sin, you will be saved, ultimately delivered from the very presence of sin. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. My God. And so he says, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. A lot of times we just sit back and allow the enemy to attack us. And we are, we have, you know, we have defenses. The helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel shoes on, preparation of the gospel of peace. But then there are times when you have to stop allowing the devil to attack you and you need to start attacking him. When he comes at you, swing at him. Swing at him. But don't swing with your fist. Swing with your sword. Oh, cut him deep with the word of God. I said something right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Cut him deep with the word of God. Cut your situations and your mountains down the sides with the word of God. The shield of faith. Watch it. Faith will help you to defend, but the sword of the spirit will help you to offend. You're so busy crying about the offenses that have come from the devil. Swing at him. Use the sword. Tell him, because the Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Cut him going and coming. Tell him, I have the victory. Tell him, I'm not a doubter. I'm a faith walker. Tell him, I am the head and not the tail. Tell him, I'm above only and not beneath. Swing at him. Stop letting him get you down and depressed. Tell him that I have joy unspeakable. I have peace that flows like a river. Tell him that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You better swing at him. Tell him. Tell him. Get back. And start. Listen. Satan is, Satan is not afraid of your I rebuke you's. I need to help you right quick. That's weak. Satan is not afraid of get behind me. But what he does flee from, a couple of things. He flees from the word of God and he flees from the blood of Jesus. You're looking at Satan or what his effects or his demons and I rebuke you, Satan, and he's sitting there laughing. Really? But when you said the word says, he's got to move. When you said I put the blood on it, it's got to happen. Do you hear me? It's spiritual warfare. We do not war against flesh and blood. We use spiritual weapons, which is the word of God. Listen, I'm trying to help somebody. You cannot be victorious, and you're not fully dressed just by praying up, and that's a weapon, and I'm going to deal with that in a minute, just by going to church, just by living right, you need the word of God. That's your weapon, your offensive weapon. And so you, you can't, you, can, you got to get past the 23rd Psalm. I see, you about to turn me off right here. Listen, you got to get past the 23rd Psalm. That's not a fix-all. The 23rd Psalm, and if you knew what it really meant, you would come to understand that it's not a fix-all. It doesn't fit everything. I, I, back in the day, I used to hear people, when they voiced their troubles or their heartaches, and people would tell them, read the 23rd Psalm. It doesn't fit everything. Did you hear what I just said? I know. I, I understand. You, you just can't quote that one scripture. You got to learn. You have to learn the word of God, and you learn it by studying. The time we waste, I, I'm going here, the time we waste on social media that's time that we could spend on our electronic devices studying the word. Please, these little times we spend with you live, these times you get to sit in the house of God wherever you frequent, the pastor only has a few minutes to get some word in you. So then you cannot walk totally in victory if you don't take time to sharpen your sword take time to listen some of our swords I'm gonna get in trouble here some of our swords are like little pocket knives wow if all you know is one scripture let me back up I'm, I'm, I'm giving you too much a butter knife Jesus all you know is one scripture 
That's a butter knife. Mm -hmm. All you know is two scripture. You might have a pocket knife. Come on. I'm talking a committed to memory. You, you got to get past that. You need a sword. You don't go to battle. Oh my God. With a Swiss blade. Not in the army. You need a sword. The sword of the spirit. Where you can do spiritual warfare. Which is the word of God. Sometimes you need to just sit there and start saying the word so that it could disseminate anything that's not of God. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak it over your life. Speak the word. Mm -hmm. the, my God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's the only thing the enemy re respects. The sword. You, I told you last time. You got to stop going to a fight, to a gunfight with a knife. You got to have some ammunition in your guns, which is the word of God. A gentle rebuke doesn't do anything for the enemy, but the word of God does. That's how Jesus in the wilderness again, he, he, the devil kept saying, if you, if, oh, help me, T. see that, that, that helmet protects you from doubt. So he kept saying, the enemy, if you are the son of God, if you be the son of God, each time Jesus came back and swung at him with the word, it is written. Wow. What are you telling the enemy? What are you saying? And that's why you probably keep going through the same stuff over and over and over again because you don't use your, my God, your offensive weapon, which is the word of God. Let me see if I can get through this. Watch this. Praying always with all prayer and supplication, verse 18 of Ephesians 6, in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Another powerful offensive weapon is prayer. And we taught on that a few weeks ago. Prayer is powerful. I want to say this. If you only pray when you get in trouble, my friend, you're in trouble. If you only pray when you get in trouble, you are in trouble. Listen. Prayer is powerful. You can Talk to God about any situation. You don't have to dress it up, fix it up, pretty it up. Just, just tell him. You can, you can bring literally bring blessings down through prayer. Get ways open, doors open through prayer. Change situations through prayer. Prayer will change people. But you've got to pray. Use that. Listen. If you spend, when the enemy is coming at you, pray. Most times, listen, I want you to get this. A secret, the devil, I want you to know. Most times, when we fall, is because of a lack of two things. A lack of the word and a lack of prayer. We haven't prayed. See, the devil gets you to go off on folk because you hadn't prayed up this morning. Oh, he gets your nerve on edge because you haven't prayed up. Pray before you think you need anything from God. Pray. Pray. Prayers. And I taught you, uh, the Lord did, taught you the ACTS method, A-C-T-S. Adore, acknowledge, admire. That's A. C, confess, come clean. Acknowledge to God that you have sinned. T, thank him. Thank God. Be thankful. S, then you ask for supplication. And you end your prayer by saying, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, that's the authority of God invoked into your life, invoked into your prayer. You, you, you are, you are uh, the, the person that goes between in your prayer when you say, in the name of Jesus, that's the power of attorney. You transact business on God's behalf. That's your power. In, in the name of Jesus. And then you say, amen, which means it is done. And it means it is so. So then that's the way you get the victory. Through with all prayer. Now all prayer. Then he says 
and supplication. Watch it. In the spirit. This is deep and I may not get through it today. Listen. All prayer. All prayer. All prayer. Make sure you pray. Don't just say prayers. Pray. There's a difference between saying prayers and pray. You know that, that now nah, lay me down to sleep? That's a prayer. That doesn't mean you're praying. That's something you've recited from childhood. Doesn't mean you're praying. But when you get in a situation and you say, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm dealing with whatever situation. I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. Your word says, if I ask, it shall be given. Seek, I shall find. Knock, the door will be open. I'm believing you to give me directions. That's a prayer. You, now lay me down to sleep. It's for when you go to sleep. And I wouldn't even do that one because I need God to watch over me all night long. Watch over me and mine. Are you hearing me? Let me get out of there. And so with all prayer and supplication, asking God to supply your need. In prayer, asking to supply my need should be the very last thing before in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me go back. Before uh, in Jesus' name, and I want to thank you. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, supplication, asking him to supply your needs. And not just your needs, but the needs of others. Don't be selfish in your prayer. The needs of others. I've discovered and I've said before that when you pray for other people, somebody will be there to pray for you. When you do right by other people, somebody will be there to do right by you. When you bless other people, somebody will be there to bless you. Are you hearing me? All prayer in the spirit. Now, in the spirit doesn't mean that you're going to moan and groan. That's, that's people's experience, and we thank God for it. Sometimes we come, But make sure you're praying in the will of God, in the spirit of, of the word of God, in the spirit. And sometimes it does mean in your heavenly language if you have one. Are you hearing me? That's for another time. And so he says, in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I just told you, I'm going to get to the end and back up. Supplication for all saints. Pray for all believers. My prayer every day is not just for St. Mark, not just for Mount Olive, not just for me, Pastor Nelson, not just for my brother, Pastor Nelson, but for all pastors, all congregations, all believers, and sinners too, that they may come to be a part of the all. Are you hearing me, what I'm saying? And so that he says, he says pray, watching, watching. It's so many of us being blinded and blindsided by the ways of the world, by the ways of the enemy, by, by, by what the majority does. Please know, please, that at the end of your life, you have to stand before God and give an account. You do. So make sure you'll be able to give a good report and not a bad one. A good report and not one to be ashamed of. Are you hearing me? He says, Watching thereunto, make sure you know what time it is spiritually, on God's time clock. We are, we are in the last of the last days. We're in the last of the last days. So I want to take leave of you in a second, but I, but I want you to know he says in supplications, perseverance, perseverance, hang on in there. Press your way. Push. Stay there. Don't you give up because you didn't get what you wanted. Persevere, prayer. Don't you give up and start feeling sorry for yourself because you face opposition. I'm going to tell you one more thing, the devil, I want you to know. When you see opposition, that's motivation for you to press forward. When you see opposition, that's motivation for you to be more persistent. Yeah. When you see opposition, that's confirmation that you're on the right track. I told you last time, if the devil doesn't fight you, because he got you already. If he doesn't throw rocks and stones at you, it's because I thank God for the opposition. I thank God for the lies. I thank God for, for the things I've been through where the enemy is concerned. And you ought, you should too, because that lets you know you are a threat to the devil. Prayer and supplication made for all saints. Pray for other people. Pray for other people. Make sure that you pray for other people. Through, but children of God, we're living in some horrible times. 
Yes, we are. These are the last of the last days. As it was in the days of Noah. Nobody believed it was going to rain. So it is today. Nobody believed Jesus could, re could return today, could come back today. Nobody believes it. But when it rained, they were outside and not inside, and they all drowned. When Jesus returns, you need to be inside and not outside. Oh, did you catch that? It's late, y'all. It's late. I, I won't tell this and I'm through. Uh, husband and wife were lying in the bed, and they had a like a grandfather clock, and that clock would chime uh, each time for the number of hours it was. One o'clock, it would chime once, and, and, and 10 o'clock, it would chime 10 times, and 12 o'clock, it would chime 12 times, but that clock chimed uh, 16 times. And the husband rolled over and looked at the wife, and he said, Baby, it's later than it's ever been before. Did you catch that? The clock is chiming. It's later than it's ever been before. Are you in right standings with God? If you die right now, are you right with God? If not, you can get right. How do we do it? You know, we do it for those of who are just tuning, tuning in for the first time. You're not saved. Somebody encourage you to tune in. God bless them and bless you. Listen, I want you to repeat after me. Dear God, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. He is my Savior. I ask you now to come into my life. Take control. And I believe that Jesus lived, died, and was buried. And on the third day, you, God, raised him up from the dead as he lives please live in my life and I thank you by faith I'm saved 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 in Jesus' name amen God bless you welcome to the family of God you need to find yourself a church home with, that teaches and preaches the unadulterated uncompromised word of God if these St. Mark and Mount Olive are not places that you want to fellowship. Get in touch with some pastor some way, somehow, where the Spirit of God is leading you to be planted so that you might be groomed and taught the things of God. Every sheep needs a shepherd, as I said earlier. And listen, for those of you who are going through, we lift you up. I thank God for all of you. I know we got... Uh, my big sister, Josephine Johnson, who's in the hospital, she's watching. I've got people in the nursing home, Sister Virgil Watkins, who's watching. I've got some of my deaconess from the Mount Olive Church who's watching and from the St. Mark Church who's watching. I've got you out there, wherever you are, watching this broadcast. I want you to know that God only allows us to do this, not for us or because of us, because we need to have a steady course charted while we in these dark waters and that's why we here for no other reason so that God could speak and we thank God for all of you we want you to know that you all and I've mentioned a lot of those names because they have asked for prayer listen I want to thank God for the oldest member of St. Mark 96 years young sister Vivian Braxton who every now and then her daughter Sheila sends a word from her to us I thank God for her and for her faithfulness and her strength is her faith rather is still strong in the Lord we lift you all up we want all of you to know pastor loves you I thank God for you finally one word from a pastor as I, I I've done it uh, several broadcasts uh, the, the president says that all churches need to reopen immediately that's a lie from the devil uh, I see the argument uh, on the news I see the argument on social media one such argument was y'all go to to Walmart and, and, and the pharmacy and they open and y'all go there. Watch me here. It's one thing to, to take chances with your life, but it's a terrible thing for a pastor shepherd to take chances with other people's lives. Most, uh, most uh, places of fellowship aren't large enough to social distance and I, I need us to understand, even with that, the numbers don't lie. They're still increasing, no matter what they say. And I, as a pastor, I've said it uh, several couple of months now, as a pastor, I take the stand that our church fellowships will not reopen until we are 
thoroughly convinced that it is safe for us to gather together. We are, lo we are loving fellowships. We love on each other, and we just can't afford to do that now. Well, you say we don't have faith. That's your opinion. But we hear from God. And if God is leading your pastor to do whatever, to open up, that's between them and God. But as far as I'm concerned, we are not there yet. We might be a while before we get there. I'm watching the Lord, and I'm watching the number numbers. One thing I do know, I hear from God. Other pastors hear from God. We together, as pastors, we love the Lord. Take this time to get closer to God. Most of your arguments, and I'm through, and I know I'm going to get some negativity. I don't care. Most of your arguments about church come from people who wasn't faithful to church. No way. God bless you. I'm through. I love you. Pastor loves you. Pastor's always praying for you. If you want prayer, uh, send us a message. We will lift you up in prayer. There's, a, there's an inbox on the church's page. There's an inbox on my page. I thank God for all of your requests. It takes me time to, to pray for you, and I love that. Uh, if you are concerned about uh, our members sending your tithes, paying your offerings, listen, that is the Lord's money. We thank God for you. Uh, you have been, oh God, you have been using Givelify, the app that we use. Some of you have been sending yours through the mail. Uh, some of you may not even know the church's uh, address. I can give them to you. Uh, would you please uh, contact the church's page, we do St. Mark and Mount Olive, uh, and we will give you, I will send you the church's P.O. boxes, and uh, we will make sure that your love gifts, for, uh, you love God, those good gifts of God, not the church, will get to where they need to go, and they're used properly. This is not, we don't, we don't want uh, this to be about money, but a lot of you have contacted, so that's the way we give, through Givelify. You can also use Cash App, uh, uh, contact me, but you can send yours in, uh, and the right people will get it and uh, log it, and you will know that just like you were in the building, it's still being used the same way. God bless you. We love you. Until next time, study more of the word of God. Pray more. Fellowship, if you have to, just over the phone, not in person, over the phone with people of like belief and those that are strong in the Lord. God bless you again, and we love you. Amen. Until next time, just don't forget, we will be here on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Love you real good. God bless you.